Good morning dear students I am Dr Nagraj professor and head of the department department of physics Bangalore Institute of Technology Bangalore Well I am here to explain engineering physics subject code 21 PHY 12 bar 22 Dear students as you all know the total syllabus of physics is divided into five modules uh, and I am going to explain fifth module and the title is material characterization techniques and instrumentation at the outset first of all i thank our honorable vice chancellor uh, registrar registrar of evaluation and board of studies chairman for uh, giving me this golden opportunity i once again thank all of them i am grateful to them for giving this opportunity well dear students at the end of the session i sincerely request you to share your feedback here is my email address and also my phone number please share your feedback so that we can improvise this presentation in the forthcoming days well first of all let me go to syllabus outline here is the syllabus the title as i mentioned just now it is material characterization techniques and instrumentation uh, it is divided into two parts for the presentation purpose first part it is all about uh, nano materials nano materials and nano composites and second part is all about instrumentation under this heading instrumentation we have to discuss principle construction and working of different instruments such as x ray diffractometer x ray photoelectron spectrometer scanning electron microscope transmission electron microscope stem that is scanning tunneling electron microscope and afm atomic force microscope this is a brief outline and as per the syllabus 8 hours reserved for this portion and you can uh, expect two full questions in the main examination out of which you have to answer only one well for this particular module this is the prerequisite dear students you are supposed to have the basic knowledge of atoms and molecules difference between molecular arrangement in different substances solids liquids and gases mechanical electrical optical thermal properties of materials and little bit about crystal structure i hope you study this in second pc chemistry electromagnetic spectrum properties of x rays matter waves associated with electron that is uh, de broglie concept of matter wave and exposure to calculus and trigonometry i hope you all are comfortable with these things with this much requisite i think we can com comfortably proceed with this particular module and after studying this module we expect this outcome and you all must be in a position to recognize the role of nano materials and nano composites in modern technology and also you will be in a position to understand the various measurement techniques well this is the prerequisite part and course outcome of this particular module well with this i move on to introduction part uh, dear students you know the whole world is totally depending upon materials and in fact our civilization is based on the materials only you might have heard of stone age bronze age iron age it all depends upon uh, the usage of the materials by the human being in different periods of this uh, you know civilization uh, right now we are uh, talking too much about nano materials and nano technology what is this nano material who gave the first idea of the nano material it is richard feynman richard feynman way back in 1959 said there is plenty of room at the bottom as far as i can see do not speak against the possibility of manipulating the things atom by atom please try to understand this sentence we know each and every substance for example this material it is containing so many uh, materials this this instrument called mobile phone is containing so many materials and all these materials are basically made up of atoms and molecules okay so till 1959 we were not thinking about the manipulation of the atoms but feynman said it is possible to arrange atoms according to our will and wish thereby we can design a material so there is a plenty of opportunity for this particular type of technology this is what that means you can you can play at the atomic level and you all know atom is nothing but nano size nano means 10 power minus 9 so way back in 1959 itself richard feynman gave a brief uh, no uh, a clue about nanotechnology 
and uh, in 1974 nario taniguchi coined this name nanotechnology what is this nanotechnology then so i can say nanotechnology involves research and development at nano level nano means 1 into 10 to the power of minus 9 meter anywhere up to 100 nanometer can be considered as nano range next nanotechnology creates and uses structures that have novel properties because of their small size so here size matters a lot till now we were talking about macroscopic domain microscopic domain but now we are getting into nanoscopic domain where size is very 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 small and nanotechnology builds on the ability to control and manipulate at the atomic scale so you are not only building the material at nano scale atomic scale you can manipulate in the sense if you want you can grow only along x axis or only along y axis or only along z axis or only along x and y axis so that type of provision you have that type of freedom you have that type of manipulation you can have and all depends upon what is your requirement depending upon your requirement you can design it is something like constructing house okay i want two bedroom i want three bedroom i want one study room i want one home theater i want balcony so you decide and accordingly you build your house similarly depending upon your requirement you can build a material this is what a broader meaning of nanotechnology is well nano is a word derived from greek language nano in greek language stands for dwarf means 1 millionth of a meter for sake of comparison i can tell you if you take human hair divide it into 80000 pieces means you splice the human hair into 80000 not one or two just imagine human hair is so small that you splice not cut it is not cutting it is splicing okay so in kannada we call it as siludu so you split it okay splain it and take 80000 pieces just take one piece out of it that is uh, one nanometer next another comparison assume that you are able to have one hydrogen atom take 10 such hydrogen atom arrange one by one like marbles okay let us say you have marble one marble of 1 cm arrange 10 marbles the length will be 10 cm similarly you take one hydrogen atom arrange 10 hydrogen atoms so that total length will be 1 nanometer well i hope you got an idea of nanometer and this image will give you clear picture about nano domain micro domain macro domain macro domain is our day to day life where we have fruits and up to and it is macroscopic it is a tree or bus car whatever you can see from naked eye it is macro domain even to some extent we can see human hair and small uh, insects uh, that is also micro domain but in nano domain we have what is called hydrogen atom dna cellulose nanofibrase like that so this 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 picture gives you some idea about the my macro size micro size nano size so just make a comparison out of it okay well this is another pictorial representation i have human hair here this is human hair single strand of human hair and these are the nano fibers dear students just uh, feel it and compare the fibers and uh, hair in front of nano fiber hair is uh, something like a big rod thick rod okay that is a comparison this is about nano robots this is about nano robots and these are the blood cells and this is one promising proposed application of nano technology where nano robots nano robots are trying to kill cancerous cells diseased blood cells in our body this is about a uh, uh, promising application of nano technology well i am talking about applications of nano materials nano technology let us go to importance of nano materials and nano technology first of all nano technology is an anticipated manufacturing technology it will allow many things to be manufactured at low cost and no pollution these are the two main things main advantages first of all 
whenever we fabricate whenever we synthesize whenever we design whenever we construct or build we look at the cost involved in it next we look at the its implication on the environment okay so here material whatever you synthesize with the help of nanotechnology is a low cost first advantage another and most important advantage it does not affect the environment it is eco friendly by and large it is eco friendly because of these two reasons nanotechnology is uh, predicted as promising technology future technology see in nanotechnology we are not using any raw material for example i want to design one spoon say for example like this so for this the raw material is steel i want to synthesize this mobile phone for this raw material for this uh, substance many raw materials are involved or i want to synthesize or fabricate or design one led bulb for this also many raw materials are involved but if i want to synthesize one nano substance raw material can be anything because it is done with the help of atoms so atoms are the basic ingredients of the universe with the help of atoms you can design the material whatever you require with the help of nanotechnology that is why nanotechnology is pr predicted as promising technology i hope you are following well some of the potential applications of nanotechnology see nanotechnology helps us in many fields for example cars made up of nano composite materials will have higher and stronger engine blocks and frames nanotechnology will provide efficient water purification nano based solar cells are low cost and better replacement for present generators nano shells will float through the body and attach to cancer cell this is what i told you i mentioned in the previous slide nano materials which are 10 times stronger than steel can revolutionize army tanks air frames space crafts bridges etc just relax for one minute think about future world where you find only nano materials if you can have a material which is 10 times stronger than steel five times lighter than aluminum what wonders you can do okay air crafts weight will be very less efficiency increases your vehicles like bike car etc their efficiency enhances already we are facing okay fuel crisis right in future okay this is going to be a major problem efficiency is therefore very important nano is therefore very important so dear students nano technology is the promising technology that is that is why so therefore i can say nano technology will make our lives more secure improve our health care and uh, optimize our use of limited resources resources are very limited okay see population is growing but earth is not expanding population is growing resources are not increasing in fact resources are coming down so we have to learn how to use the resources in a optimized manner in a limited manner so this is the need of the our dear students well now let us see we are little bit of physics in nano materials and nano technology very little bit physics i will explain you might have already studied in puc about two types of properties physical property and chemical property i touch upon only physical property some of the physical properties of the materials are density electrical and thermal conductivity elastic property means mechanical property refractive index dielectric constant etc dear students remember all of them are bulk material properties and do not depend upon the size in the sense whether you take 1 meter long copper wire or 1 cm copper wire its resistivity will be same whether you take 1 by 1 uh, glass sheet or 0.1 by 0.1 glass sheet its refractive index will be same whether you take cubic you take cubical solid material or a thin wire of the same material 
its mechanical strength will be same its x modulus will be same bulk modulus will be same they do not depend on the size or volume of the material and this already you know but when you reduce the size keep on reducing the size make 1 meter as 1 cm 1 cm to 1 mm 1 micrometer like that means 10 to the power of 0 10 power minus 2 10 power minus 3 10 power minus 6 like that you go down in the size the moment you go to 10 power minus 9 meter size properties change drastically this is very surprising thing in fact we have not understood why it is happening like that thoroughly there are some theories so there is an ample of opportunity for research here so why the properties are changing when you go down in the size when size becomes 10 power minus 9 or less than that okay you will see unusual effects so i just mentioned two here two examples resistance of a copper wire <coughs> increases with decrease in the diameter in macroscopic scale this is what you studied in puc resistance is inversely proportional to area directly proportional to length as length increases resistance increases as area increases resistance decreases okay resistivity is constant this is what you know but when you go down in the size in copper itself resistance won't vary like that when you go below 10 power minus 9 resistance as well as uh, conductance that is reciprocal of resistivity is quantized it changes in a discrete manner it occurs in a discrete or individual manner not in a progressive manner next you all have seen gold you have seen gold color gold color is yellow it is a characteristic color but when you go down in the size of the gold okay that yellow color changes look at this look at this color or uh, and melting point of course even melting point also of gold nanoparticles are different from those in a macroscopic scale a single gold nanoparticle has its own unique behavior so like this what i mean to say when you reduce the size at particular stage properties will change so the point where properties change from bulk nature bulk size to nano size that particular state that demarcation state is known as mesoscopic state see till till here one type of property here onwards another type of property so this is the demarcation between these two different properties of the same material here also copper here also copper in this range resistance is continuously changing but in this range resistance is changing in a discrete manner so that demarcation where the changes occur drastically is known as mesoscopic state so i define mesoscopic state is a state of matter below which the properties of matter become size dependent so it depends on size now so till here it was not depending on size 10 power 2 10 power 0 10 power minus 2 10 power minus 3 10 power minus 6 same for all the sizes same property but here onwards 10 power minus 9 10 power minus 10 for every size property changes drastically so the state above onwards no size dependent below onwards size dependent that state is known as mesoscopic state so therefore i define mesoscopic state is a state of matter below which properties are size dependent mesoscopic state normally and definitely lies in the nano scale so mesoscopic state starts at 10 power minus 9 or maybe 10 power minus 8 minus 8 onwards it is mesoscopic state well i hope you are following this now let us move on to the next step mesoscopic physics this is the real physics where we need to explore a lot as of now we know very little about mesoscopic state mesoscopic physics and this mesoscopic physics includes study of nanoparticles and their properties at nano scale nano scale means at 10 power minus 9 where the percentage of atoms 
at the surface of the material becomes significant dear students try to understand when you take any bulk material like this okay whether it is a mobile phone or this uh, specs case or this pen or anything atoms molecules they lie everywhere not only on the surface they lie even inside also so in fact number of atoms on the surface will be less than the number of atoms inside the material that is in bulk material okay so number of atoms or the atoms available on the surface is insignificant in a bulk material and we don't consider only surface we consider the whole material as such but when it comes to nano it is not so in typical nano particle majority of atoms are located on the surface of the particles whereas in conventional material they are present in the bulk this is what i said just now in conventional material atoms and molecules are present inside whereas in nano they most of them stay on the surface now we define a quantity called surface to volume ratio it is the ratio of surface area and volume of the material if surface is more then it is surface ratio volume ratio is high if surface is less then surface volume ratio is low in nano materials surface to volume ratio is very high this is the reason why intrinsic properties of nano materials are different from conventional materials so this is the predicted reason for drastic change in the behavior of nano materials i told you no nano material properties are different from bulk material same copper copper property in the nano range in the macro range are totally different same gold in the micro macro range it is yellow in color in uh, uh, nano range it is uh, not so yellow and it is not that good conductor at nano range something like that so nano properties properties of materials in the nano range are different from the same material in the macro range what is the reason probably it is because of surface volume ratio surface volume ratio is more for nano materials more and more atoms sit on the surface and this is the most uh, predicted reason for intrinsic properties of nano materials i have a small uh, you know pictorial representation here just to make the surface to volume ratio concept more clear i have taken a cube of 1 by 1 here in the first diagram it is 1 by 1 so volume is 1 meter square uh, sorry area is 1 meter square surface area there are six faces therefore it is 6 into 1 that is 6 meter square but volume is 1 meter cube now i divide this into eight pieces when i do so surface area becomes 12 meter square but still volume is 1 meter cube only so that means i am going from bulk size to micro size let us say so now it is 12 divided by 1 now i divide this further into 24 pieces then i have 24 meter squares right surface area is 24 meter square but still volume is volume is one only so first i have only one cube next i have eight cubes eight cubes i arrange one by one like that see it is something like this you take watermelon you take watermelon okay this is a surface area now you cut it you cut it into two pieces and open it so this and this face these two faces are extra created remaining surface area remains as it is so surface area whatever was there earlier plus these two faces so surface area increases but total volume remains same okay now you cut the watermelon into two more pieces okay and open it so like this we create more surface area we create more surface area but volume remains same volume remains same see for example this book so much surface area i have right so much surface area i have okay i open it i open it so again so i generated more surface area you know so like this surface we generate more volume remains same by generating the surface i can deposit more and more atoms on the surface look at this diagram this is bulk material diagram there are very few atoms hardly there are any atoms on the surface but here there are many atoms sitting on the surface 
because many atoms are sitting on the surface they contribute to physical property even to chemical property they all participate they all participate in their own capacity thereby the properties of nanomaterials are totally different from bulk materials so i am trying to give a little bit of physics essence of physics involved in nanomaterials of course i am not satisfied because the physics or whatever the theory of nanomaterials developed as of now till now is not so convenient to explain for students at puc level students at first year engineering level so this is a very limited uh, development and it is of course my limitation also i accept it so what i can say mesoscopic state is one where you can see the drastic changes in the properties of the materials second what i can say it is surface to volume ratio which plays major role in nano materials and their properties well dear students with this let us see how nano materials are synthesized so i just only mention the names there are two methods one is top down method other one is bottom up method top down means it is chopping cutting cutting keep on trimming it is like sculpture who cut away the stone block and then make a beautiful idol it is top down approach top down approach is similar to sculpture cutting away at a block of stone computer industry adopt this method to produce microprocessor chips bottom up is something like building wall brick by brick okay you take bricks arrange them and construct a house so bottom up is from bottom to top it is something like building our product atom by atom it is almost like building wall brick by brick but of course it is a very slow process surface coating uh, of many materials adopt this technology so top down is one method of producing nano material bottom up is another method of producing nano material dear students for more uh, uh, no to gain more knowledge please try to explore these two methods in top down itself there are many methods in bottom up also there are many methods please try to know more about this when during your leisure time or in your higher studies well coming to properties i cannot say these are the exclusive properties of nano materials i cannot say nano materials have very good conductivity i cannot say nano materials have very good mechanical property not like that it varies from material to material but for all that i would i can say surface to volume ratio is mainly responsible they have catalytic properties they have size dependent melting points they have very good optical properties in some cases and uh, they have electrical properties they have magnetic properties their bulk behavior of nano structure materials with the bulk behavior and nanode behavior are totally different this much only i can say i don't think uh, people will ask what are the properties of nano materials i cannot uh, no list the properties of nano materials in a particular order it varies they have wide variety of properties this is what i can say but various physiochemical properties such as loss of surface area mechanically strong optically active chemically reactive makes them makes nano particles unique and suitable applicants for various applications this what this much only i can tell well now moving on to applications i have few applications for you here nano materials are now being used in industry like manufacturing industry resistant paints anti crack resistant paints anti graffiti coatings for walls transparent sunscreens stain repellent fabrics self cleaning windows they are used as ceramic coating for solar cells nano particles are fillers in tire and they can improve adhesion to the road so you can avoid skidding of the vehicle nano technology can be applied in production processing safety and packaging of food these are all already there they are in use they are no they are in market now nano materials are used in drug delivery gene therapy water purification cancer treatment antibacterial anti fungal agents See the list is very, very, very vast. I have mentioned only few. Already, nano particles, nano technology has grown 
to a billion dollar of industry okay so once upon a time it was semiconductor industry of course even now also semiconductor industry is in the top next it is nanotechnology please try to explore more about this with this now i move on to second part of materials that is nano composites what is a composite material see from now nano materials to nano composite see when two or more materials having different physical and chemical properties are merged together that merging is either physically or chemically a new material is produced that new material is composite material and thus produced material will have in fact totally different properties from the constituents look at this example i have sand i have cement i have water i have sand cement and water yes you are correct what you are guessing is correct when i mix them what i get yes you get concrete concrete is a composite sand cement water are the ingredients so in in your kitchen you produce so many composites you know so many composites you produce you take rice water vegetables and some masala put it in cooker and wait for some time once it gets heated to certain stage you get beautiful delicious mouth watering veg pulao veg pulao is composite rice vegetables oil and curry leaves water they are ingredients so when you mix them you get a material that is composite material and that composite material is totally having different properties see like here as such sand is not a very good adhesive sand is not very strong water is not a very strong material but when you mix concrete is going to be very strong it will bind two bricks together you know <coughs> okay so that is why i said composite material will have totally different properties so we have so many composite materials around us concrete plywood reinforced polymers fiber glasses and even metals they have composite materials we have nowadays composite materials around us okay now coming to nano composites what is so special about nano composite what is so special about nano composite first of all nano composites are the substances obtained when nano sized particles are added or incorporated into a matrix of standard material see we have a standard material into the standard material you insert you add you impinge okay you put some nano material then the whole product is going to be a nano composite here what i am telling the whole material not necessarily comp nano the base material can be macro into that i put nano like uh, putting refill see this is a material right it consists of right one bulk material one small material so i put this inside so now i call this as a composite like that in nano composite we have a very big material which i call as base or matrix into which i impinge i introduce i put nano sized material look at this uh, 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 you know definition nano composites are multi phase solid materials with at least one of the phase having the dimensions in the nano material meter range one of the that's what i told you bulk material is not necessarily nano whatever you put inside should be in nano range okay and that too nano not necessarily in all the directions if i take a copper wire whose thickness is 10 power minus 9 length can be 1 meter try to understand copper wire thickness can be 10 power minus 9 length can be 1 meter if i put it inside the bulk then i call it as a nano material see for example if you mix sodium chloride TiO2 and some polymer some polymer in this combination that is in the combination of sodium chloride TiO2 and polymer if TiO2 molecules are in nano 
not necessarily sodium chloride, not necessarily polymer. If TiO2, titanium dioxide is in nano, then the resultant product is nano composite only. Understood? So, you should understand one thing here. Nano composite, not necessarily nano in size, can be a bulk material. In gradient is nano. Okay? That way, in wedge pullout, Right? If you put a material, food, food product, of course, okay, in a nano size, then the wedge palau can be called as a nano composite, provided one of the ingredient is in the nano size. This is the world of nano composite. Please look at this vehicle. So many parts of the vehicles are having nano composites, whether it is window, engine cover, interior, body. Or headlamp, or headlamp coating, or the bonnet, everywhere, even in the tire also, even in the tire also, we have nano composite nowadays. Okay, and another illustration where you find the nano materials: bike, okay, windmills, mobile phones, instruments, musical instruments, textile industry, aeroplane, automobile, civil engineering. It is uh, you know you, okay, you can call it as a Brahmanda. Nanotechnology application is uh, no, unimaginable. That is why I said nanotechnology is a promising technology. Well, look at the nanotechnology, sorry, nano composites. Nano composites, as I told, will be having a bulk material into which you have okay, nano uh, material introduced, reinforced, dispersed. So that way, Nano composites will have two parts. One is matrix, that is bulk material. Other one is phase material, dispersed phase material. So bulk material, dispersed phase material. This is a bulk material in fact. This is a bulk material into which uh, I introduce nanofibers. See these blue rods are nanofibers coming and sitting into it. So that whole thing is a nano composite. So, another illustration, this bulk material is a matrix in which reinforced nanofibers, these grey lines are nanofibers. So, this whole thing is a nanocomposite. So, nanocomposite is a mixture, mixture of two things. One is a bulk material, another one is a nanomaterial. Well, dear students, we have types of nanocomposites, there are different types. This type is based upon nature of the dispersed matrix, nature of the dispersed phase. Okay. We have ceramic matrix nanocomposites, short form CMNC. They are non-polymer based. Metal matrix non-composites, they are also non-polymer based. We don't use polymers here. We, you need little bit of chemistry knowledge to understand this. But I am not going in detail about how they are produced. I am only mentioning the names. You just remember only the names. And polymer matrix nano composite. So here we use polymer. So we have totally three types. CMNC, ceramic matrix based. MMNC, metal matrix based. PMNC, polymer matrix based. NC means nano composites. Well, in ceramic matrix based, that is CMNC, Bulk material is a ceramic. Bulk material is a ceramic. So it's only what is the nature of the bulk material. Bulk material means the frame. And the ingredients are nano. Whatever you disperse, whatever you insert, whatever you impinge is nano. If this bulk material is ceramic, it is called CMNC. If the bulk material is metal, it is called MMNC. If the bulk material is polymer, it is PMNC. That's all. In nano composite, if bulk is made up of ceramic, it is ceramic matrix nano composite. If it is metal based, metal matrix nano composite. If it is polymer based, it is polymer matrix nano composite. They have their own properties, they have their own applications. For example, CMNC has got uh, improved optical electrical magnetic properties. MMNC, they have improved catalytic property, hardness, elastic, electrical conductivity. Metal mass, sorry, polymer matrix, they have higher strength, uh, increased elastic property, 
ionic conductivity, thermal stability and many more. In fact, they are now finding larger applications in defense and civil aviation. Aeroplanes are nowadays made up of nanocomposites only. And these nanocomposites have general properties like this. I can, I can list the properties for nanocomposites, but for not for nanomaterials. Nanocomposites I can list to some extent like this. They have enhanced mechanical properties. They have improved electrical properties, decreased gas, water and hydrocarbon permeability, flame retardancy, thermal stability is high, chemical resistance is very you know, excellent, more surface appearance, excellent optical clarity. So they are very transparent. So that is the reason why nanocomposites are nowadays used in you know you know buildings uh, windows are made up of nanocomposites right like that coming to applications again i mentioned only few of the applications not many they are used as thermal protectors for turbo engines in aeroplanes they are used as lightweight materials in automobiles they are used in trans Transparent packaging, food packaging nowadays, transparent thin uh, that uh, polymer no, layer, even vegetables are covered in malls. You might have seen this, right? They are used as brake lining and brake disc materials. So vehicle braking efficiency increases. They are used to absorb electromagnetic radiation. So when light falls, no, some radiations they must be absorbed. Thereby the temperature can be controlled. And in medical field they are used for various purpose for drug delivery, in dental application, they are used in tissue engineering and many more. And in waste water treatment, eco-friendly, environmental aspect, for food processing, pest detection, agriculture productivity and enhancement. So this is a, it's a very big list. They are used as anti-corrosion, barrier coatings, it is something like a paint where you can avoid corrosion. So, there are many, many, many applications of nanocomposites. Well, I just only mentioned the names, not in detail. Synthesis methods. Nanocomposites are synthesized chemically, mechanically, thermally. Chemical method, chemical synthesis. Mechanical method, mechanical deformation method. Thermal recrystallization method. Okay. So, dear students, when you go to your higher studies, you will be having open electives. Open electives offered by different branches. If you find any mid paper having nano nanotechnology, please opt. Please opt for that. Grow your knowledge, enhance your knowledge, okay, and so that you can find better options uh, in higher studies, even job opportunities also. See, as a physics teacher, I can give you only a basic ingredient of the nanotechnology, nano composites, right? You try to build up more on this. Keep interacting with your mechanical teacher, keep interacting with your electrical teacher, keep interacting with your chemistry teacher and also electronics because they are the real teachers, they are people who are working on this nano, right? I could say nano composites are expected to generate a great impact in the world economy and business in coming days because nanotechnology is a promising technology. Well, with this, I end today's lecture. Today, I could explore only nanomaterials and nanotechnology. In my next session, I take up instrumentation where we study more about principal construction and working of different instruments and their uses. Okay, dear students, thank you for your patience hearing. Please give your feedback. Send your feedback to my email address. Okay. Your feedback is very important. So can I can improvise. Thank you. Thank you once again.